the YTPC Joshua Stewart smoking a pipe up north in the woods. Once again, we're in the shop down south. But Thursday, we're going to be up in the woods. The only thing is, I don't know if I'll be able to put out a video up there. The internet is a little, uh, well, there is no actual internet, but the cell signals are usually okay. I don't think they're going to be good enough to do uploading, but I can, I can check emails and, and stuff like that, I guess, easy enough. So, looking forward to it. It's going to be kind of a quick trip again. Uh, I'll be leaving early Thursday morning. Driving about an hour, hour and a half, two hours to on a kind of a long way there. Got to pick up my new rain fly for the tent. I think I mentioned in a previous video, I got a friend that's got a tarp shop kind of a roundabout along the way to get up there. We'll talk to him tonight and we got all the details figured out. I mean, that won't take him any time at all to do the work that he's got to do to it. So it's just modifying a, a, a rain fly that I bought from one of the reputable uh, canvas tent makers. So I'll probably get there probably about... Uh, 8 30 9 o'clock in the morning and I suppose I'll have to I shouldn't say I should I'll have to I'll I'll have the privilege of visiting with him for a few minutes although he's with a tarp shop and, and he's kind of in the lakes country he's uh, swamped right now with you know, boat covers and boat seats and and uh, all that kind of stuff. That's kind of his bread and butter. But so get there, get that picked up. Head up the rest of the way north. And I got a busy day. We've got a Airbnb guest coming for the Memorial Day holiday weekend. And I gotta do some serious spring cleaning before they show up. So I'll have to get that rain fly replaced by myself, which I know is probably gonna be a challenge. Then, uh, I say after I get that done, then it's just all the general cleanup of all the stuff that you don't see in the wintertime when you're up there. You can do, do a good thorough spring cleaning in the tent. And uh, got a little shower shack up there too. This is all off grid too, so I mean all the water for the shower shack has to get brought in. There's a, a campground. It's a couple miles away, but I go get the water from there. But when you're in an off-grid shower, you got a five-gallon bucket, and you got to make sure that you get uh, soaked down, lathered up, rinsed off by the time that five-gallon bucket runs out. It's set up pretty decent because we actually have a, a propane water heater and a little 12-volt electric pump that, with a battery that have a 
little solar panel that keeps the battery charged. And all that battery does is just that shower pump. So. And hopefully everything's working good and it, even though I winterized the shower, hopefully uh, nothing got damaged. Although our winter wasn't as severe as some years, so it should all be okay. I'm worried I won't have enough time because I won't get up there until late morning. Probably be about 10.30 at the earliest by the time I get up there. Then uh, there's a, a track meet for the kids. Could uh, could easily be the last one of the year because it's the well in for track it's not playoffs but uh, it's just the, like the qualifiers for the next the next level. So depending on how the kids do, we got a daughter that's. And, and the son are both in high school. Son is a senior. So this could very well, if, if he doesn't do uh, really, really well, it could be his last meet. But, I mean, hopefully he'll... He's in a couple events, so there's a couple of chances for him to move on. Anyway, that track meet is about an hour and a half back towards home base here from up north in the woods so then after the track meet I'm depending on how much I get done because I'm, I'm gonna have to leave for the track meet by about three o'clock so I'm only going to get a couple hours of of stuff done which will be Maybe just enough to get the rain fly on. Then after the track meet, I'm going to head back up north and finish up whatever I don't get done. I, I probably won't get too much done that night, but Friday morning, hopefully get a few things done. Because Friday afternoon, the guests are coming. So I'll probably greet them and make sure everything is in order for them and then from there I'm going straight down to the Twin Cities where my daughter's in college. No detour through home or anything and we gotta get her packed up and moved back. Better get her moved back for the summer anyway. So, originally, she should have graduated this spring, but what they, uh, was it her sophomore year? The college that she's going to dropped what she was majoring in. So she either had to transfer or get a different major. So she decided to change her major because she likes the school. So with that, then she's got to go an extra semester. So she'll be graduating in December. get her moved back and 
Actually, she's actually going to stay down there because some of her friends are graduating on a different day this weekend. I don't remember if it's Saturday or Sunday or Monday. So she's actually going to be staying down there to watch her friends graduate. So she's actually not going to be coming back up here on Friday night. After So I'm just going to be taking all of her stuff in the we got an old Suburban, and we'll pack that thing full of whatever we can fit in there, and hopefully the rest she can fit in her car. <laughs> it was just sneezed, and I got a whole arm full of uh, kitty spit. I suppose I've been here for a few minutes and I haven't even told you what I got here. Got the Missouri Meerschaum Country Gentleman with the bent stem. <laughs> Probably my favorite cob. I got a whole bunch of the just the regular cheaper legend cobs that they're great, you know, especially for the price. I mean, you can get them for, I don't think I've paid over eight bucks a piece for any of them. Maybe with tax and stuff, but. And in it, in the, I'm trying for the very first time Amphora Full Aroma. This is only the second Amphora blend that I've tried. I tried, uh, was it the Virginia? It was a couple weeks ago. And the, when I smoked that one, it was, it was fine. Pretty decent. Didn't think too much of it. I mean, nothing, you know, super ridiculously good. But, I mean, it was just a normal good tobacco. But I got to say what impressed me about it was after I was done, I, I left the, the shop here for an hour or something. I came back in and the, the lingering room note was actually really pleasant. Not like some of the Kentuckys that I enjoy. And you come in a yeah, half hour later and the room kind of stinks a little bit. But with that Virginia that was in the yellow package, it actually left a pretty pleasant lingering room note. So I didn't really know what to expect with this M4 Full Aroma. With a name like Full Aroma, you would expect that it's got a pretty decent room note, which I can't really speak to right now. Being right in the middle of it all. But Oops. I'll read the description on the package. I'm not very good at clinching and talking at the same time, so. No, I won't read all their uh, flowery language on the description, on the first part of the description, but more of the contents. Centuries of tobacco craftsmanship go into Amphora Full Roma to create a full-bodied blend with a hint of fruit blossom, subtle vanilla undertones, with a hint or pff, that's a period, not a comma, with a hint of fruit blossom. Subtle vanilla undertones complement the mellow chocolatey burleys while Kentucky, Oriental, and Virginia grade leaves combine for a fruity aroma and a well-rounded smoke. I 
I hadn't really read that before I before I lit this. I, I maybe read it, but I didn't really take the effort to comprehend what I was reading. I was basically just looking for the component tobaccos, and by the looks of it, it's got a little bit of everything. <coughs> But what I was thinking I was getting for flavor was kind of like a really, I don't know how you'd describe it, like a, a whiskey or a bourbon or something like that. Not overpowering. Just kind of there, but that's maybe a little bit of the the floral aroma that they're talking about on, on the description. The fruity floral. Which is interesting. Because I can't really say that I can compare this to too much of anything else that I've had. As far as bite, that's always a concern for me. It, it's not biting too bad at this point. But this, uh, the full aroma here and the, the Virginia, those are the only two M4s I've got up to this point. I've actually got a the sample pack in my shopping cart from one of the online retailers right now. I'm just kind of considering on whether or not I want to pull the trigger on that or not. Because I wouldn't mind having another package of the of the Virginia. That stuff is pretty pretty decent if you like Virginias. And they've got a Kentucky, which I'm finding is said in a couple of videos back that I'm I think I'm kind of getting into the Kentuckys. And there's the English in there which I'm I'm still not huge on English. I'll probably get there someday, but not any time in the next couple of weeks, I'm pretty sure. And what do they have that's, uh, <laughs> just have a message on there. I can't really see the phone right now, what the message is, but. Probably the wife texting me to take the dog out. But anyway. So yeah. And for a full aroma. I'm I'm betting the room note is going to be pretty decent. If you know me, I'm not good at picking out the individual flavors that I'm tasting or, or uh, not very good at picking out the component tobaccos. Probably especially on one like this where there's a little bit of everything in it. Oh. 
Oh, my daughter just texted me and that showed up on the screen. So I don't know what those other... Might have been emails. Sorry about that, but it's happened before and it'll happen again. So with that, we're running a little long again. I was hoping to not let it get this long, but rattle up the old brain and when stuff starts to dribble out, then it doesn't want to quit. Yeah, so. Might have to start doing like some of the other people do for their first impressions or their reviews and and uh, give a rating. One through four seems to be, that, well, that's what they use on tobacco reviews. One through five seems to be more common for actual usage, or one to ten. But I'm always just a little weird. I might do like a one to twelve scale or something like that. In fact, uh, I think that's what I'm going to start doing. A one to twelve scale, just to because I'm a little different that way. Or maybe a uh, first grade, second grade, twelfth grade. Maybe that would be. I'm going to ponder that a little bit, see if we want to actually do that or not. In the meantime, this is a. Uh, I don't know, I'm kind of confused by it. I'm generally pretty good. Bowl is staying. It's not not getting too hot. I mean, I'm I'm probably uh, two thirds of the way down. Which I don't know. This pipe never does get super hot anyway. We'll just say it's pretty decent at the moment. We're, I'll have to, I was thinking of, of the scale, how to, how to go about doing that, but. We'll just call it pretty decent for now. So with that, once again, I hope, uh, you ran this as fast as you could on the playback. Save yourself some time so you can enjoy other people's videos. A lot of good presenters out there. So if you were able to speed it up as fast as you can stand to listen to it. Save yourself some time so you're not watching a 25 minute video of a guy just kind of rambling and puffing on his pipe. So with that, Joshua Stewart smoking a pipe up north in the woods. You have a good day.